they just I almost said a white person thing. <laughs> just now? Oh, oh big stretch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, getting old. Oh, not don't move like I used to. Oh. <laughs> I can hear every bone. <laughs> Oh Sounds God. like a Rice Krispie treat when I get out of bed in the morning. I haven't heard that one, but I feel like that's totally a white a thing a white person. Oh, would say. all of that cheesy shit is white people <laughs> stuff, right? Are we gonna get into some? We are gonna get into that. <laughs> I've been there's this stuff going around, and I just found a Instagram page too of things white people say, and I've just oh. been laughing hysterically because I'm like, either I've said that, I've heard it my whole life, my dad said it. And this is really true. Like, is these are these all things white people say? Like, does no one else really say these? It's <laughs> hilarious. And I don't know if it's white people or just so nerds funny. or older people or something from our past. But it's always strikes. Like, it always hits you. And like, because you're perfect. like, this is true. Because when you're actually saying it, you don't think about that. No, you don't. But then you're like, oh, my God, I'm I, such a dork. Dude. I think we grew up with it yes. from our parents and our parents' parents. And we all are so used to hearing it that we say it naturally it could be dad stuff too like you could you could say <laughs> a lot dad of it stuff yeah it's my dad and have it be the same thing like things dads say right correct that could work so I white figured dads I guess if, yeah white dads <laughs> I figured if anything it's one of those things where if we do it at the end of the podcast if you guys are at home listening to it we can turn into a drinking game that Ooh. either if you said it before you drink or if you laugh at it you drink which I'm gonna be laughing at all of them so. oh yeah we need to do a couple where to try not to laugh <laughs> but the funniest like ones are ones I haven't heard before. So like okay. you're gonna say So I'm gonna say I have a lot. I wanna react to them in real time. I know. Because hearing it for the first time, that's the like there's a guy on TikTok that does that and he like reads it for the first time and laughs his fucking ass off. Is he? And it's I like it. Yeah. Because you're like we're all here. A lot of them are just copied and pasted. Love so it. it. Love to out. hear it. But I think before we get started on that, ooh, girl. Now some I guess there's juicy drama. Some juicy drama, and I guess there may be a couple spots available <laughs> for a blonde and a brunette at Barstool, Barstool? Sports. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, it's unclear, but well, I can tell you what I know. Yeah. So let's summarize it. Um, so the president, Dave of Barstool Sports, got on Dave Portnoy got yeah. on their feed because. He owns the IP and the feed carrier. Yeah. So he decided, well, first of all, he said that he wanted to let the girls talk about their story. Like multiple, he gave him multiple chances. Like, hey, I want you guys to do this for himself. But he didn't. And the New York Post, Post has been <laughs> saying stuff about it. So he figured to get on there and just keep it honest. Right? Yeah. Like, hey. And he even talked about things that even made, he's like, hey, this might make me look like an asshole, but I don't care. Oh, he so never he was, cares about looking like an asshole. But no. he did say... I'm honest. Yeah, he did say that. Um, he said which, people might not like me, but right. at least I always will say that I'm a bit of an honest dude. Which in business, I value more than being nice. Me like, too. as long as you're just honest about what you're fucking doing and forthright, like, I don't care if you say it in a nice way or yeah. if you're kind of a dick or if the deal sucks that you're putting on the table. As long as you're upfront and you're not trying to do fucking shady shit. Yeah. And by behind the way, the too, scenes. this whole thing was very just. Like, it seemed like he was telling facts. He also said it was from his opinion. He wasn't bashing his anyone. point of view, yeah. You know what I mean? There was yeah. actually one person he seemed to not like, but that was really about it. Um, but basically, he was saying how they started off from the very beginning, right, where they found Alex on social media. She already had, like, call her daddy. Right. Do, she did a few episodes. He Unclear loved. Unclear how many followers she had. I don't it, think He said they was, were nothing, though. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. She didn't have, like, a big, huge platform at that time. No. He had just found her and thought that you know found talent basically yeah and once he realized that she was actually editing the you know audio and stuff herself he was like okay cool this is not just some bimbo this chick knows what she's doing yeah. so he started talking to her and telling her that he wanted to launch them with barstool and she then said hey it's a package deal it's sophia and i cool so he was down with that That happened later on though so like he kind of signed alex and then so sophie sophia did he because he told me because he said in this that it was both of them together. Once That's, he had talked to Alex a couple times. Yeah. And then he was kind of like, I didn't even know Sophia was like part Correct. of it. And then she kind of just. But once they got into the negotiations, yeah, yeah, yeah. though, for a contract. Yeah. So they decided to make a three year deal. It's a three year contract. They were both were starting off at $70,000 um, a year. But that Plus was bonuses. Yeah. All the bonuses. And then, you know, they can renegotiate after the time is up. Um, he goes, that's the biggest thing. Like if you get big and, or you explode, he's like, by the end of this, you'll probably be famous anyway. He's like, we can renegotiate. 
Um, they went back and forth, and apparently, like, Alex didn't want to give up the intellectual property for Call Her Daddy for the name, but that was the only way Barstool Sports was like, that's the only way we're going to do it. As if we own the Call Her Daddy name. Yes, but this was in the very beginning of negotiations. Correct. So the first contract that they signed was signing over the name and the IP, intellectual property. So Basically, that happened they're in the very beginning. plucked from nothing, though, when you think about it. And made and big. And what they wanted. Put onto a huge fucking network. Yeah. Making at least a guarantee of 70000 a year, not including all the bonuses they would get for the downloads, which they ended up exploding. And I don't think people understand, like, how much money it takes to market yeah. something. So, like, what they were doing, basically, is putting the Barstool name, the Barstool marketing, editing, everything. All their people, everything on it. Their social media that they had already behind it to blow the show up. Yeah. So... This will mean that he came into something that was already well established. Because right. he said he was Barstool president, what, for 17 years? He's been doing it for 17 years? That's yeah. a long ass time. That's yeah, and he sold it a couple times. So he is yeah. a multi millionaire at this point yeah. and knows what he's fucking doing. Correct. So he knows that if you are going to make somebody big, you have to have some kind of assurances, right? Mm -hmm. At least for a couple years that you're going to make enough money out of it that's going to make sense for how much money you have to put into a show mm -hmm. to grow it, right? And the point that you, the reason why you own the intellectual property is exactly this, so that someone can't say, cool, I'm big now, see you. Like, and that's what he thanks said. for everything, bye. He says the same thing as a sports team, right? As, as a sports player. Think Just about anyone it. anyone that knows He's like, when you sign someone for a contract, three years for our whatever, you know, half a million dollars, you know, some pitcher. Once he blows up that first year, that pitcher can't just be like, see a bitch, I'm going to the Yankees now because they're going to pay me more. It's like, no, you have a three-year contract and you have to uphold that. Like, right. that's the point of it. And if somebody's going to take you on, they're going to have to buy you out of that contract, Correct. I guess would be the only other way to do it. Yeah. So I guess they explode it. Right? I mean, yes. they did explode. And so six months in, Alex asked for a raise. I guess they both gave Sophia and Alex a raise, but Alex was getting paid a little bit more than Sophia, which he said he thought was justified so due to the fact fair. that she was doing more anyway. So um, they start contract negotiations at year two, which, by the way, he said the first year Alex got paid $506,000 and Sophia got paid $461,000. So basically they go from unknown talent to making almost half a million dollars in one fucking year. Right. So now not they're by themselves, by the way, not by themselves. And they start these contract negotiations for year two, which is fair. And um, this is what they asked for. So they got a lawyer, I guess, who's a douche and didn't know what the fuck he was doing. And they asked for one million guaranteed like they want one million each like a year guaranteed they wanted to be freelancers so they no longer wanted to be underneath barstool sports like they want to be able to do their own fucking thing it's fucking insane to me Go right ahead. they wanted to get 50 percent of all of barstool dits like 50 percent on the merch 50 percent on the alcohol 50 percent on everything and they wanted them to give them the ip of call her daddy after like once they left so they were like Barstool was like, "Are you fucking stupid? <laughs> no, fuck but no." That's, he said, "Fuck no," because that's not even a point to negotiate. So usually, when well, because they just went me, 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 and he goes, "What are we gaining out of this?" But there's no place to negotiate. So he no. ended negotiations at that point because when you come to somebody with a deal, there has to be some kind of room for okay, I won't give you that, but I'll give you this. Okay, and they this just percentage, weren't. but list there was no place to negotiate in this contract and he literally told them to go fuck themselves well and the thing is too is at the time i guess like sneakily they were shopping around for like someone else to buy call her daddy out and so i guess this guy suit man who fucking sophia would talked about all the time on the podcast who she was dating and dave called him out i guess his name's peter nelson he's an hbo exec mm -hmm. and um so he was basically trying to manage the girls and like stuck his neck out on the line and try to get them I guess, attached to other networks and stuff. And he was the one who was, like, giving them the lawyers and all mm -hmm. the advice. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they offered, like, after all this shit. So this shit's going down, by the way, with COVID. Like, oh, yeah. During COVID. Mm -hmm. And Barcel President's like, hey, listen, the only reason why I feel like maybe I even just dealt with this stupid shit, because he's like, this is a lot of drama that I don't want. He's like, because honestly, I should just be done with this. He's like, but the reason why I'm working towards it is because I need the revenue right now. And this is like one of our bigger shows. He's like, so why not negotiate with them? 
Yeah, I mean, he. I think he, he was being had to smart. had to admit in which he did in the beginning is that they did really, really well for them, and you yeah. can't deny that. So as far as like what he made from that show as well, he made a fuck ton. Yeah, and he wants that revenue. Still, he wants so that's that the revenue. Only reason why he's trying to work with them in for this. sure. So he offered the girls like after they came back, he said, "Listen, I'll give you half a million a year, guaranteed. Like that's fucking guaranteed. Half a million a year each. 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 You get an increased percentage of your merch." I'm going to knock off six months off your contract. So I guess there are 18 months. He's like, that means you only have one year left of your contract. And once you leave, you have the intellectual property of call her daddy. You can do whatever the fuck you want with it. Run away with it. That deal is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And it was like, no. And Sophia, I guess, is like her man's telling her not to fucking Mm -hmm. do it. And so finally, Alex, I guess, smartened up and was like, hey, I want to do this deal with you guys. Like, and she's not on board with me. So Alex took a deal with... Call her daddy, I guess. And it was 75, 25. So 75 for Alex and 25 for Barstool. And I guess like Sophia, Sophia eventually was like, oh shit. And tried to come, you know, she tried to come back and Barstool's like, hey, sorry, too late. We can give you your own show. We'll give you half a million guaranteed to but start your own podcast. they already signed with Alex. Yeah. yeah. You can like be on the Call Her Daddy feed if you want and get other, you know, followers. That's what they said. Get oh. other people to like listen to your if I was podcast. Alex, I would be like, nope, she yep. can't be on my fucking feed. And but. so I guess now she said no. It's been silent. And Sophia's trying to sue, supposedly, Barstool and Alex now. <laughs> Good fucking luck, by the way. So I'm going to tell you this. So I looked into it last night. And the, you know, the daddy gang is pissed off fucking beyond belief. Because they go, wait a second. So this podcast that preached about, like, own your shit. Don't let a man do it for you. Like, you know, you run your life, blah, 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 blah. Like, make it on your own. You don't need... Here's Soup Man, fucking mm-hmm. puppeteering Sophia, I guess. And all mm-hmm. the girls are sitting there going, like, really, you let this guy who looks like a yep. fucking cross between Quagmire and someone else? Mm-hmm. Like, that's the dude who's fucking this whole mess up for you? Mm-hmm. Like... God. So I guess... so sad, but it's so classic, right? Doesn't it seem like it's kind of classic? That's what why I'm we always say, about you know, is, like... Why did they spend so long? It feels like because I I've heard some of their episodes and I've heard like chattering, and it made it they made it sound as if they got paid fucking pennies on the dollar like not even you know what I mean like they made it sound as if they were not getting paid at all. And when were they saying this from the very beginning or recently? It, recently, I mean yeah. recently, and then like just even throughout like all all their listeners were always like you guys said you guys got, were getting paid nothing and you guys were being taken advantage of and then we so, come to find out you're making half a mil a year right so their host salary is not great right i mean 70 a year it's okay but you live in new york so fuck you that's nothing right mm-hmm. but what doesn't get factored in and what it's you can't bonuses. really you know you know it's the it's sort of like net worth right where you're like at the end of the year you go oh shit i actually did make yeah half a million it doesn't look like that when you just see your salary come in right but Correct. when everything else gets added your bonus gets added you get the bonuses however many months every three months every whatever when it really comes down to it that's how much they made yeah but they didn't know it wasn't guaranteed and it's a better story to be like this is what we're getting paid right Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm well. So I have a few questions for you because you've been in the podcast world for a while, and yes. you know what's like normal. You know what's not. You yeah. know if people are being greedy. You know it's not. So, mm-hmm. so you said seventy thousand dollars to start off with, and but with bonuses per download, is that a good deal or a bad deal to start off being an unknown person? It's a good deal for your. F- first year and you can always re- renegotiate okay so that's the deal is you get big and then you renegotiate and and they were totally willing to do that year to well year they two. did seem to do that I yes mean, they and got they paid. gave them raises like so you know yeah the point is everyone needs to make money right sure. but in the beginning there's so much that the media company needs to put into your show to mm-hmm. make it big that like it needs to even out for everybody in the beginning. And then when things start to become profitable for everyone, you can start to renegotiate, right? Yeah. But in this world of podcasts, it's such wild, wild west because you become this personality and like, really, they could have just quit, started a new feed called 
caller daddy. They want to do something with five like oh, fathers or something. The fathers. I don't know. Free the, the fathers, fathers or something. Which did you hear on that? Free the fathers was their hashtag for the daddy gang or whatever. And and por- he told him Portnoy t- started selling fucking merch. He told for him to free daddy. No, he did it and was like, let me just fucking capitalize on this free daddy bullshit. No, he said he, he admitted it last night in the yeah, yeah. in the podcast that he said, hey, some of you guys might think this is fucking slimy of me. He's like, but the girls were literally demanding to get paid for the time they have not worked. Yeah, so I put free and your- he goes, so what I told them to do is that we'll make the merch free the fathers and that we profit off of it. Yeah, and they profited off of it too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and as well as he did but right. that instead of paying them he was like here you go he's yeah. like and obviously we didn't make m- much money from that so we got an offer from barstool at a certain point a long time ago ross did or the boys did from drinking bros but the the rate was so low that they were paying you're like dude if you're doing it yourself and they already had like a following whatever so it wasn't a good deal for them mm-hmm. but if they were no one sure it would be a great deal especially with renegotiations that can happen year two, year three. Even like, bro, just do your fucking show for three years, blow it up, and then leave with your IP. Like, if that was the deal, do what you got to do. Sure. Put some fucking work in. Like, I just don't know why they were so stupid where they didn't take the half a million guaranteed an increased I don't know why percentage. They were so stupid. They were trying six to- months off a fucking contract. Which, by the way, Dave said that, like, out of nowhere, they just decided not to come into work anymore. They haven't done a uh, – they their, their last episode is April 8th. So, like, they just – he said they just stopped coming they into work. stopped coming in. And, look, I'm, I'm not denying that Dave Portnoy may be a hard guy to work for. Oh, he I is no a little bit of a douchebag, asshole, whatever. But it sounds a little bit like he was – staying out of these girls way i mean they didn't even come into the office really they had their own on location stuff i mean they weren't even really that connected do you know what That's i mean what he so said. meh and like, i how- know it is a he said she said right now but i will say that there's a lot of listeners sitting there and they kind of are breaking it down to like the meat and potatoes of it and saying are you fucking kidding me these girls came in once a week to talk about tits and dicks and you were getting paid half a million a year to do it? Yeah. And you're complaining about mm-hmm. it? And I'm like, Ooh. well, or, when you put it like or that. listen, you can't see far enough in the future to fucking make half a million for three years. And then at the end of the three years, you can take all of that intellectual property, put it on your own feed, and continue it mm-hmm. on making own. a shit ton. You can't go three fucking years? That's insane to me. So now I'm like, what the fuck was so bad? Mm -hmm. I guess I don't know. I guess maybe it will come out. What was happening to them? Was somebody doing something to them? That's what I'm wondering. What the fuck happened that you can't go three fucking years? Or is it just a sad tale of greediness? Of greediness of two girls that maybe weren't super close and some guy fucking came in between them. It's classic fucking tale, right? Yeah. And ruined everything. In my mind, ruined everything. Because, like, I don't know how well Caller Daddy with just Alex is going to do. I don't know how it's going to do with all this bullshit behind it. Uh, I don't know if they got back together. I don't think, you know, just nobody wants that kind of fucking bullshit. Yeah. I feel like the fans have been a little flip floppy a little bit because when you read their reviews on iTunes, it seems like no one likes Alex, but everyone loves Sophia. Right. Oh, this on their yeah, because there was like th- Alex, stop talking over Sophia, stop putting her down, like the, let Sophia talk, okay. right? And that's on iTunes, but on okay. Instagram right now and TikTok, everyone's like, "Fuck Sophia!" I've always loved Alex anyway. She's been the best founding father. So part of me is like, "What's what do you guys want? Like, what is it? What do you mean?" Nobody knows what they want. They want <laughs> what, you, the drama. You know, people don't. are loving this right now. They're loving it in a way, but they're not loving it in regards to a show continuing. So like. People like drama, but at the same time, you're not going to tune in to hear two girls not get along yeah. ever. Like nobody wants that. People listen to podcasts to hang out with friends, to have a good time. Correct. You never listen to a podcast to feel shitty. To, to, no. Well, you don't want to hear two girls bitching. You can literally turn around or anywhere like in life. Or like tension <laughs> that you can like feel, right? Yeah. Nobody wants that. Oh, yeah. the under, Yeah. That's right. And you can't hide it. 
I cannot hide it. I mean, I have never listened enough to to figure out if they have like a great vibe, but I assume just for them working together as long that they would have stuck together and that at some point Sophia would have been like, you know what, bitch, you're right. Let's fucking go on this together. Fuck that dude. They and you know, yeah, they did have a good relationship. They got to the point that they are at together. And I think sometimes people um, have a problem realizing that you don't you don't just do stuff by yourself Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean like no matter how great you think you are like you got wherever you got because of the other person with someone else yeah it was you two together you two together and your dynamic don't ever think that you're fucking better than that you know where i think people think they can get away with it is when they look at like bands and right when you look at like nsync or destiny's child right and that works that's a classic case right there of showing that the one who's a little bit more talented than the rest, right, goes off on their own and succeeds their entire rest of the career. So maybe Alex, in her mind, is thinking to herself, like, well, Sophia didn't do shit anyway. I came in here with all of this. She was just an extra personality on the podcast, so maybe I can continue it and make it even better. Well, but- I have news for Alex. She is not Justin Timberlake. <laughs> a po- a you podcast, podcast by yourself? You have a podcast with two girls talking. I know. It's yeah, it's very different talent. So, you know, we, me and you have talked even about podcasts that are just like one particular person. Like you can't just always have it's kind of hard to have just one. You always have to have someone in there. Yes. It's even like a host of a Tonight Show, right? You yes. always have you the someone extra to character. Off of. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise you're just sitting there like a crazy person like I do in my car every day. <laughs> Talk and to pret- yourself. Yeah, and I pretend that I'm on the phone like this. Hey, guys. I'm like, oh, I know. And I'm like having a fight with someone. And I'm like, <laughs> you do that. Mm hmm. I pretend that I'm on the phone so I can talk to myself in the car. And I don't think it's crazy, but it is I've probably. done that before. Just, I think, to act like I'm talking to myself to convince someone I was busy and talking to someone else. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not because I was. No, no, no. <laughs> I would, like, I'll just start talking, like, you know, what? you know what, motherfucker? Yeah, you're fucking gaslighting me. And then, like, and, and then I'll see somebody, like, pull up next to me and be like, I know, because yeah. it's just like, it's crazy. And <laughs> but you don't know nowadays, too, because remember that Bluetooth that people I would know. wear? For the longest also, time, I would see them talking to the store to themselves. And I was the like, thing the that's fuck? saving me now is that most people, they're, it's coming out of their radio, right? Yeah. So I could just be like, <laughs> true. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I'm not yelling at my steering wheel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am a little bit crazy. And more and more we now are. in quarantine. Because sure. I'm just like, you're stuck in the house, and then you leave on a drive, and you're just like, motherfucker. No, you're fucking crazy. Yeah. I'm not fucking crazy. It feels oh, like the oh, only time sure. you're feeling heard, like, in my car, yelling at it. <laughs> exactly. It's the only time I work stuff out, because right? who I'm trying to talk to at my house hmm. won't listen. <laughs> so I get it. So, anyways. Well, this is a very unfortunate situation. It and is. And I'm curious to see how it plays out. I yeah. was expecting the girls to, like, come on air at some point and just explain everything, which, by the way, too... Uh, old Presidente, Dave was saying that, um, that there was no legal anything holding them back from talking. They could have talked at any point in time that they wanted. I know. You know how for a while they were all like, yeah. And I guess he was, I guess he was questioning them about that too. Like, Hey, why do you guys kept seeing, keep saying that you're trapped and that you're in jail and like all this other shit. And they were like, Oh, 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 Dave, it's just as a joke. You know, it's the ploy, it's the tactics just to get people to dramatize about things and more interested. And then I guess later on they were like, oh, no, we are shopping around and looking for someone else. Like, yeah, we do think that. Like, how else is your boss supposed to know how you feel unless you, like, tell them, you know? Yeah. Like, hey, dude. But it's a classic case of, like, young girls. They're very young. How old are they? 20s. 20s, early 20s. Um, Okay, because I was going to ask that. I I can look it up. But I was... Like, the whole situation that he was talking about, that literally, they didn't tell him what they were going to do, and then they went behind his back, Mm -hmm. and then they, you know, literally kept going behind his back, and then acting like everything was cool to his face, and then when he tried to reach out and talk to them, they fucking ignored him, and then they finally came to him, like, straight out of left field, and was like, oh, hey, by the way, all that stuff we've been joking about and telling you we've been lying about, that's all actually true, and we're actually about to leave. And he was like, if you leave, I'll sue you. It literally is like, okay, so two 20-somethings. They're early 20s. But um, it literally seems like they watched a movie about people, (laughs) watched a movie or a show about people, like, leaving a business (laughs) or, like, suing, right? 
and they just like did all that stuff like they were just like we can't talk about it for legal reasons and he's like the what? O- the older millionaire guy that owns you is like yeah you can like we don't you can talk about it and they're like no we can't Apparently, talk about it Sophia franklin's 32 nah quit it that's what it says where is that confirmed i'm trying to look still okay but yeah it looks like they did do it wait so alex cooper i guess was born august 1994 which makes her age 26 okay um and then i'll look here that doesn't make sense if she was born in 1992 she can't be 32 yeah no <laughs> i mean it just is it's giving me like a little tidbit thing here i was like no way wow, sophia she's... call her daddy age so obviously this person doesn't know how to do math. And obviously I'm not going to do public math right now on the airway. We're looking at the internet. Sorry about it, guys. Uh, let's see. She's 27. So Sophia's 27 and Alex is what? What did you say? 26? Uh, Sophia's apparently gonna be 28 here yeah this okay. year and then the other one's 26 okay so, so when they first started they were 25 26 okay so you they're know still what I mean? like i mean they're as much young. as i'd like to use that age as an excuse ah, i think no that's when, like i started to really mature definitely like, come not. on and definitely if you're gonna not. be if you're gonna have a job like this and be on a public platform like this you need to behave a little bit more like like a fucking adult absolutely but it doesn't matter what age you are the moral of this story it doesn't matter what age you are you can be fucked up by greed by a dude you can be manipulated you could be blinded you could ruin fucking friendships you could ruin your fucking career over some fucking douche and have you seen him no Oh, my God. Are you kidding? You have not seen this guy? Like, he's not even worth ruining even your fucking mascara for. But he's rich. So, like, I don't give a shit. At a couple points. Just looks wise. Depending on how much money he has. (laughs) Okay. He looks like Quagmire. Kinda. Oh. He He, does. He looks. He's not hideous. He's not cute. He's not cute. But he's like Adam Driver, like, ugly cute. Like ugly. Cute. He looks like Quagmire. <laughs> he's not worth From it. Basically, he's, a, he's a little slime ball. He's going to bat with I just Dave hope Portnoy, that he treats which is her fucking like a goddamn princess. Because he doesn't treat her like a princess, or else he would be like, "Do your show. Like we can shop it at the end of three years. Like if you want help with that, we can do it. And your numbers will be crazy at that point, and I can help you with that. Yeah. Not ruining her relationship." Her career? Yeah. Like, she could lose fucking everything because of this guy's fucking slimy bullshit. I know. Well, apparently, too, he doesn't like so Barstool President. So he doesn't President. care about her. You know what I mean? Like, apparently, he doesn't like Barstool either. So you know Nobody that there's some likes types them. of, di- like, dissension between them. And of course, it's like guy bro shit. Like, oh, oh, my feelings are hurt. I'm going to get you back by taking your girls. And then realizing that it didn't work. Yeah. And so now it's two fucking losers fighting. And these girls are kind of caught in the middle. They are, maybe they're not super young, but they are definitely dumb. Mm -hmm. Right? And they definitely watched a show. Dumb enough to walk away from that deal the first time. They watched a show of fucking Law and Order or something where somebody (laughs) like sued or whatever. And they're just like using all those phrases. Like, girl, I've been watching a lot of Law and Order SVU and I I swear. I can't talk right now. I like know how to get us more money. (laughs) We'll let you guys know what's going on when we're allowed to talk. And the guy's like. You can talk. What are you talking about? You guys can't. Um, Listen, Daddy Gang, we tell you guys literally everything, except for this one thing that we can't actually tell you, but we're not going to because we're going to. So cryptic. (laughs) Like, whatever, losers. Like, we're basically business women, okay? Because we're in Q2, and we know what that means. And if we don't get what we want, we're leaving. It's been a year. Calm the fuck down down yeah there's people that don't even know who the fuck you are yeah like wait until you're global wait until Dude, the pandemic's over and growing we see what and you're growing at. and growing and God, then it was sky's the boom. limit bro but like that that fucking guy made that sophia girl feel like she was the michael jordan of their fucking crew and she wasn't 
right? Neither one of them are. They work together yeah. on bar stool. Like it all fits. Like just out of curiosity too, what do they think that so they do realize how much bar stool actually does. Like they have someone control the site for their merch. They have someone who does they the don't. They like don't. they have you know companies who get their sponsors like they have all this right like all the stuff we have here like behind the scenes people even though you and i actually do a lot which i think we do probably a lot more considering we do a Alex, lot more than like, they did way more than they do but even so like there's still a lot of fucking mi- like yes. moving parts and there's where if they're gonna do this see. on their own good luck you know what I mean? Like that's gr- that sounds great and all, and that's a really good idea on paper. But how are you going to apply that like realistically later on? Like, yes, you have the name now, but are you gonna be able to have really great sound quality? Are you gonna be able to keep up with the sponsors? Like, are you gonna have someone to work that? Is it just gonna be you guys or what? Are you gonna do your social media? Are you gonna stay on top of it? Right? Are you gonna be dealing with the ad agencies? Are you gonna be sending them the downloads? If you're gonna, are you gonna edit? Are you doing yep. making sure that? whatever song you get because they were owned it blah 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 who's like, gonna own your yeah your site for the merch and all kinds all, of stuff. everything like, for you you know <laughs> i know i know and that's why part of me like when i godspeed girls kind of heard a little bit about it last night and listened to you know what old presidente said i was like these guys i was like i feel like they're stupid as fuck they're stupid as and fuck. I and I want to check in with you because I was like, this is, I'm still new to the podcast world, but from what I know so far, I was like, this is the stupidest thing I could, you could possibly imagine. It's stupid as fuck, but it's also, like I said, the wild, wild west because we're not yet a respected media outlet. The Do podcasting you know I, world? Just podcasting world. Like people just feel like, oh, cool. I could just start a feed. Like, yeah. oh, you don't, you can't own da da da. Yeah, you can own da da da. You can own IP. Like we own you know, our show, but like the media company owns like the name, let's Mm -hmm. say, right? So like if we wanted to start, if you and I wanted to leave and start another show, we'd have to call it something else, Mm -hmm. right? But whatever. It's like, I don't know. Um, But also we're two adults that if we ever did have an issue, we would just talk to our bosses like normal people and say hey guys this is what we want. This is what we want to do. This is what we want want want. to renegotiate. Not just fucking fall off the radar and then come back with like gloves off saying like I, things have been fucked up for years like wh- what you didn't tell I me hate that shit um <laughs> the next story that's pretty pertinent to right now is mary kate olsen got her emergency divorce denied so you what? know do you know mary kate's old, um married to this old as shit dude no. um so she's 33 she's married to this 50 year old um oliver Sarkozy oh yeah he's a looker too Uh uh-huh like so she added a bunch of points uh what the fuck for that's like her dad for money yeah they both have some pretty pretty prominent daddy issues but um the court deemed her uh divorce non-essential which I think why did she file for divorce anyway does it say why um no, there's they're, they're not citing anything right here. But she's in quarantine with this 50-year-old. I mean, we all are Mary Kate right now, right? Can we get our divorce pushed through, please? <laughs> yeah, like it's right. an emergency. Yeah. yeah, you're like, calm down, calm down. You're in quarantine. Just calm down. Yeah. It's not. That it's gonna bad. be okay. It's gonna be okay. You'll yeah. figure it out at the end. But I mean, th- she had wanted to before, but I guess she said that he's kicking her out of there leased apartment in new york which can you do that uh you can before divorce if you want to kick someone out of the home it's going to have consequences later but he clearly doesn't care but if you want to kick someone out of your house you can before divorce happens do they almost have two decades difference in between them that fucking crazy it's like get out girlfriend and by the way you're fine like this citing that as your emergency like you're Mary, like you're kind of tell me you don't have somewhere to go, right? Like, you don't have money. You're gonna like be you out on the like streets. A stash of full house money somewhere. You're gonna be out on the streets because this brings up a point of people that actually do need the emergency divorce, like people that are in abusive relationships. I was gonna say people abusive that relationships, are like stuck uh, in their fucking home with somebody that's like an abusive, drunken asshole, whatever, yeah. or abusive to the kids or something, and they can't get their divorces gone through. Like Mary Kate, you're fine. Yeah, but it brings up a bigger issue of like you can't put divorces through right now like let's get it together yeah people are probably seriously suffering 
she can go to the fucking Four Seasons. Like, shut the fuck she's up. She's fine. Yeah, she's fine. She's fine. But clearly, again, she I feel wants like this is another case of, this. of celebs being like, "My shit's more important, mm-hmm. right?" Than me because I mean, of my status and anyone else. He's trying to kick me out. He's First trying to all. kick me out, and everyone's like, "Bitch, you got like five other places you can live. Don't you have a place exactly. in the Hamptons?" Like, <laughs> and why are you leasing an apartment? By the way. Why do you not own an apartment in New York? Because haven't we talked about this before? Don't they all buy shit that's way too expensive for them anyway? Yeah, but they usually buy it. Do they? You know, Chrissy Teen was talking about them. Uh, he, she said that all celebrities get mortgages, right? They'll get mortgages, but they're own, they own the house, mm-hmm. right? So they're not paying outright $20 million. Sure. But they are paying a mortgage. So I'm just wondering, that was another question I had. It's like... Why is this super rich guy and Mary Kate leasing an apartment? I don't know. Anyways, whatever. Times are fucking tough. We all that want emergency divorces. Crazy. Okay. Sorry, Mary Kate. If you can't, if I can't get it, you can't get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, this way she says it. I'm petrified that my husband is trying to deprive me of the home that we have lived in. And if he is successful, I will not only lose my home, but I risk losing my personal property as well. Girl, you're fine. Girl, you're fine. Go stay at the like, fucking Four Seasons, and when this is all cleared up, you can get your fucking divorce and get your stuff back. What do you mean personal property? He can't take your shit. Like, what is he going to do? Sell it? What's he, he going to do? Put it on eBay right now? I it's mean, gonna people be do there. say fucked up things when they're mad. Like, oh, yeah, like, I'm going to kick you out and do your stuff. Like, this guy okay, cool. Doing Guess shit. what? He's still going to be held by the laws, you know? Petrified. Like, and if you have proof of it, like, he's going to get By fucked. the way, you're petrified? <laughs> you're petrified of losing? <laughs> you know, you it's just like, shut up. Yeah. It's so stupid because there are people that are actually fucking petrified, you little idiot. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I haven't heard of the Olsen twins in so long. Right? Because they keep it that way, right? Like you only see them when they're like popping out for a smoke break or like weird sightings. No, I don't ever see them. And they always, and every time they're ever out, people are always commenting on their like. Their whole thing. Yeah, their sulking shallow sunken bodies you know that they don't like eat or take care of themselves know. or I something know what they sound like right i don't know isn't it sad a little bit when you think of back to all like the kid stars that were just blossoming on television and you fell in love with that all seem to have like really major issues now because of everything yeah. that they went through like macaulay Culkin. yeah macaulay Culkin actually is the most sane normal one out of all of them out of all of them uh the olsen twins What's that chick's name from? Everyone from the Goonies besides Sean Astin. Oh, they're all kind of fucked up? Yeah. Are they? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, what's that redhead's name? From the what? What's the redhead's name who was from um, fucking what show? psychotic chick, Lindsay Lohan. Oh, yes. Well, that was a product of her mom, momager. Oh, do now isn't that the same thing with Britney Spears? Is it, does it, uh, Britney, Britney Spears has bipolar one, which is like a really, mm, which is like if she isn't taken care of and made sure that she's on her medication, she will literally like kill herself or just be it. Bipolar one is real crazy. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Bipolar two, I think, is the one that's like more depression and manic oh, episodes. Oh, makes you feel bad now. Because I know she's like, I know she'll sometimes get on a live. She's actually like a crazy person. And we all kind of, we either love her or we laugh at her or whatever. But she's actually like a for real crazy person. And I've said this forever. She doesn't seem all quite there. Oh, no. Whenever people are like, Britney's fine. I'm like, no, she's not. Like, okay. She just burned down her gym. I know everyone keeps saying like, oh, she's fine. She's living her best life. She doesn't care. It's like. burn her fucking house down. And then Party watches the video and goes. I don't feel like she's okay. Like she seems like things are numb. She's not all there. And then everyone starts to comment, which I feel terrible. Like it kind of drives me a little bit insane because everyone always has, you know, something to say about appear. Like it's always appearance. It's always appearance, which is not the. Every time with a girl, like. Oh yeah. Traditionally. Before you're like, oh, she's actually a crazy person and she needs to like, she needs constant conservative conservatorship. Like, so her dad is in charge of her basically is her guardian so it's almost like she's a minor child oh. so he is in charge of her finances every decision that she makes where she lives which she, she there was an article saying that she wanted to have a baby with her boyfriend and her dad said she couldn't and she and then oh wow now because she's that crazy 
So it's it's either you're in a mental institution uh-huh. or you, or you stay have. out and I am in charge of absolutely everything you do, which is dangerous, right? But I think it's pretty well documented that she would fall off of the deep end. I had no clue about that because yeah. everyone was just always saying like she looks crazy, like with all the money that she has, why is her hair always, you know, why she looked this way? She always looks like she's slept in makeup for like weeks. It's you so know, crazy. and stuff. And I and everyone it's just so thinks crazy. like that's just her way. Like that's just right. who that's she is. That's Britney. Britney's fine. Um there was a hashtag for a while called free that uh was free Britney. Do you remember that? Uh-uh. It was maybe like last year, but it was free Britney when everyone found out this about her dad about her like dad taking her being but in charge of everything they and they he were was like being manipulative yes. and trying to own her. Yes. When in reality he's been helping her. Yeah. When in reality like sure I don't know how much he gets of the money. I don't know how how much of the stuff she's doing that she shouldn't be doing as far as like doing shows or Vegas residency. It's very like stressful. But I think she oh. also does need work sure. to be or else you I'm see sure what she's hel- like. I'm sure it helps keep her sane. I she's been doing this her whole life. I'm sure she gets love yeah. and enjoyment from it. And it's pa- like she's very it just keeps about her it. kind of focused. Right. Where it's like if you don't have anything, then you burn down your gym and you're just doing crazy dance videos and you're just like you go crazy a little bit. So. After people sort of, I mean, there's still people that are just like, free Britney. She's being, she's held hostage by her dad. But once everything kind of came out in her, you know, her diagnosis a long time ago of bipolar one, like everyone's like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> she's actually not okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll just let dad take care of her. Otherwise, some really bad stuff's going to happen. Okay. And she has two kids and, you know. Aw. Right? Bless her heart. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like I kind of feel because before, like when you don't know anything, looking from the outside in, you're you're going, dude, this chick is like fucked up on drugs, fucked up, or something. Mm-hmm. Like she kind of needs to get her life together. Right. Why are people allowing her to go on social media like this? Type of thing. Like you know what I mean? You yeah. kind of felt like she was doing it to herself, but then in reality, when you realize she has some type of disorder or condition, yeah, that she needs like a lot of help for, and you and know, getting those medications right, it's a constant. Um, renegotiation if you will where it's like every couple years they start to like lose effect or whatever and you have to like re go in and re calibrate is some of these have like some major side effects yes there's usually weight gain but she looks fucking great that's what i'm saying yeah i mean she well she's she She may have some adderall in there too like i don't know what's going on i don't know what the meds are yeah i don't know any of that but i do know it's keeping her as balanced as it can be right now it's keeping her Seems. so that she's not like a homeless, cra- crazy person in the street. And she's actually like a functioning entertainer yeah. to where we could be like, she's kooky, but she's talented, right? I don't yeah. know. But uh, everyone just now kind of is like, it's Britney. It's Britney. That's her. She's always going to have the makeup under the eye. She's always going to have the horrible extensions. That's just her. The messy hair. She, that's her. Oh, And she's going to look great. I mean, she's going to dance and she's going to do weird workout videos because she's really, really focused on that now. So good for for you. I I wish I had a disorder where I just wanted to work out all the time. Yeah, that'd be great. Wouldn't it? (laughs) But I just, my disorder is not wanting to work out at all. My disorder is like having to push myself (laughs) to be like, if there was a camera on me, I'd be like, get the fuck out of here. (laughs) I'm not showing you shit. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god I'm doing yoga this, by myself I saw this really fucked up DM that this chick got and this guy like by the way he was like some Middle Eastern guy we'll, we'll just talk about this right before the yeah, sponsors yeah, yeah. but he like he goes hey by the way he's like I just want to let you know that I follow you because of all your bikini pictures and he's like and it's starting to get really sunny out and hot and I haven't seen you in bikini is that because you gained weight <laughs> and she was like what the fuck what the fuck <laughs> Love it. And I was like, bitch. Like, bitch. obviously she didn't care, and I loved for it for sure. Oh my god, like pathetic. Uh, get the fuck out of get here. Get out of here. We're not ready for bikini season yet. Get out of here. No, I got my Shut quarantine up. bod going on. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Which, by the way, that could be a good or that could be. I don't care what the fuck it is. You're just embracing it. Some oh, people yeah. are. Some people are Dude, getting like fucking good or bad. full on fit quarantine bod. Some people are like gaining the quarantine fifteen. I feel like I'm just. Steadily maintaining. declining, maintaining. <laughs> I'm Definitely not maintaining. Like some days I'm maintaining. Some days I'm like increasing, and other days I'm declining. So I guess maintaining. Yeah. So I'll do like weeks where I'm like working out all the time and doing crazy, and then I'll do weeks where I'm eating pie every day. So it all just kind of like cancels each other out <laughs> to where I'm like the same. 
Uh, I really wanted to have I, a that, piece of like, kale a day. Why don't I have six pack abs? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> um, that's perfect. Uh, intro to ghostbed yeah. dot com forward slash drinking bros. They are still doing twenty five percent off plus two free pillows. That's so awesome. Um, at ghostbed dot com forward slash drinking bros. That's our landing page for the whole company. And I don't know about you, but I pretty much just think about my bed all day. <laughs> so I feel like I think of my bed all day. And then at night when I'm going to bed, I think of waking up and eating breakfast and getting coffee. Is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you're in the bed, then you're Yeah, because like, oh, you're so comfortable. Okay. And you, yeah. 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 Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. I think, <laughs> uh, I think I'm think i bringing ghost bed into some drama. I might need a couple. Oh. I think I might need a couple twin beds for a friend that needs... Um, bunk beds there but i'll go. let them know they're great over there yeah um they take care of our community as you guys know when you go to that uh landing page they have all kinds of deals all kinds of places for you guys to ask them questions get feedback chat so they love us we love them ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros 25 percent off next up strike force energy dot com promo code lady boner um i need all the coffee all the strike force so i had the coffee in the morning yep needed the strike force today yeah took it on my other show because it just like you know it helps with depression it, <laughs> just does, it helps keep you going <laughs> and keep, keep your keep mind you going going helps keeps you focused and um your body yeah it's great good for to put a little pep in your step which we all kind of need right now we use it while drinking last weekend perfect just right like, you know oh, what i mean wait. just like keep up a little bit we played a uh, seltzer pong oh my gosh a little we bit. need we need a quick update yeah we'll do on, that on the uh on your friends quarantine relationship quarantine relationship which um makes me happy yeah but um, we did we like just put a little in and it it was great it kept yeah me, right it kept it us keeps going you all night going depending on what you're you know, you can drink whatever. There's certain drinks that are like, oh, make you tired. Put a little strike force in there. Yeah. Keep it going. I don't know if they like for me to say it's for day drinking, but hey, hey. that's what they're going to get. Multiple uses. Go to strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> enter code, promo code, enter promo code, lady boner for 20% off. Um, I don't know if we said, but it's like a little pouch of energy yes, that you can is. put in any liquid to give you clean long lasting energy without crash or jitters uh next up we have raycon um i love my raycon so, do I. so raycon earbuds are my new favorite i don't want to like i don't want to say any other brands yeah that i'm like comparing them to but all i want to say is that i wear them all the time now whether i'm taking a call whether I'm listening to music, Correct. whether we're doing a show. I love the rechargeable container. Like, that is the most efficient thing possible. How cool does it look, too? It is. It <laughs> sits there. You know where they're at the entire time. Yep. You don't have, like, one pouch where you put them in and then another, like, a USB you have to plug them into. They're in that little rechargeable pouch where you always can find them. And they have those removable different sized ear, you know, pieces. Yes. Now, this is huge, Which right? I love. Because some people will be like, oh, I can't wear earbuds. They're just they like, me. yeah, they just don't, like, don't fit in my ear right. So when you get the Raycons, they come with um, all these different sizes. Four, I think four or five different sizes. Four or five different sizes. If you can't fit these in your ear, then you need to go to the doctor Listen, because they literally have every size, right? I can fit them in my ear and I can't fit normal ones exactly. in mine because they're uncomfortable. And this one, you can find your perfect fit too. Exactly. So. so go to buyraycon.com slash broets, B-R-O-E-T-T-E-S, to get 15% off your wireless e earbuds. And they're already very, very well-priced. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. you could pretty much put them up against, like I said, I'm not going to say other brands, but there has been brands that I bought that were very expensive. Very expensive. And by the way, like you have the sound turned all the way up and yeah. you still can barely hear it where these, like I have plenty of sound left over. You may mean yeah. volume to turn up, which they're is They're a little bit less, uh, they're a little bit more discreet too than other brands of earbuds. Like they literally, you they fit in your ear yeah. you can't really see them they're 
awesome. Go to buyraycon.com slash broettes for 15% off. You will not be disappointed. And also the playtime is like six hours. So yeah. in the in the charger and out, it's fucking amazing. Just try them out. They're a good deal too. Next up, we have um, our faves, one of our faves, Liquid IV. Um, we have a little announcement maybe we'll do at the end of the week, but we have some fun stuff coming up with Liquid IV. We love them. We love their story. We love their owner. We love their fucking product. Dude, and they keep coming out with more flavors too, and I'm loving it. Yeah, so Liquid IV is basically a pouch of powder that you put into 16 ounces of water and it's going to hydrate you two to three times Mm -hmm. more than just the bottle of water plus it's going to have vitamin c b vitamins potassium all these things that we need right now for recovery for immune system for staying healthy like those are all the things they tell you to do right yes stay hydrated Take vitamin C, vitamin B, and potassium. Mm -hmm. We're like, cool, we just do this. And also, our husbands keep stealing our liquid IVs. I know. Well, so yesterday, so we drank, what, uh, Saturday? So Chris and I both had some liquid IVs Sunday. Had to. I mean, neither of us were really hungover because we didn't drink much, but you're still getting older. So we had a few, and then he did some yard work, so I brought him out. Some Beautiful. More, Beautiful. I figured to be a good wife because he keeps asking every day, can I have a, can I have can a liquid IV stick? And I'm like, I'm like dude, oh, damn it. get your own. Right? But uh, they have, so I know they have one called, I think, Strawberry Cake that was inspired by Stevie yes. Oki. And, Just um, so good. Now they have another one that's inspired by the music of Justin Bieber and they have Yummy on it. Oh my God. Yummy, yummy, yummy. yummy. And it's Guava Hibiscus, which I'm like, I'm dude, gonna I'm get this down flavor. for that. So, um, and also too, they just got asked here a bit ago if is it safe to use during pregnancy, and they said they have a lot of pregnant women that love using their hydration products. So always just ask your doctor if you have any concerns. But I'm telling you right now, yeah, I don't think there's anything in there. If you're drinking Gatorade or yeah. Pedialyte or any of those things, like same same, switch over yeah. to Liquid IV. It's way better for you, way healthier. It is going to hydrate you faster, and it's from an amazing company that's literally doing good with their shit, like everything. And that always helps, right? When you're buying something and you know that the company does good things with the money that you're giving them for your product. Yeah. I always like that, too. They're giving it to healthcare workers. Yep. They're giving it to other countries. Yeah. You know, if you buy one, they give one. It's great. Yeah. So go to liquidiv.com. Use promo code BROETS, B-R-O-E-T-T-E-S, at checkout, and you're going to get 25% off whatever you order um i'm gonna be getting the yummy i think i'm just gonna buy it and use my promo code yeah (laughs) i don't want to bother them they're very busy at liquid iv it's a great company i knew about them uh from my the moms in my neighborhood before they even became a sponsor so when they wanted to sponsor i was like fuck yeah yeah." and then every all my friends are like you have liquid iv are you fucking kidding i was like no yeah, I'm like a real show, dude. <laughs> yeah. Right? We're big girls. They're now. more impressed with my sponsors than they are with the show. They're like, yeah. what? Yeah. You have Liquid IV? I'm like, yeah. You know. <laughs> um, so go to liquidiv.com, promo code BROETS, get 25% off, get hydrated, get your vitamins in. Stay healthy, motherfuckers. Um, okay, so <laughs> should we do an update real quick of your friend? It won't take long because we cannot say much. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we can do an update. So anyways, they we told on I th- was I think it was the last show we talked about them. Was it one of our yeah, it might have been on their last show. Yeah, about, we were kind of like know, quarantine we'll give you dating stories. Quarantine dating stories. Um one has developed. We won't really talk about that, but then we can talk about your friend <laughs> that you hooked up with one mm-hmm. of your friends, right? Yes. And they got flew out during the quarantine, mm-hmm. had a nice little weekend together. What can you tell us? that um well before she even came to visit him he was you know hitting me up and being like hey what does she like to eat what are her favorite snacks what are her favorite drinks so he made sure that he she had like everything there that she loves i love him i know uh really nice guy she's not used to that at all like she's never been who is she's never been treated that way really (laughs) like you know what i mean (laughs) and so um it i mean they hit it off instantaneously honestly and love it love to so hear it so they all we all hung out on saturday together and they were like for sure 100 percent 
that couple that was like all over all each over other to a disgusting making degree. out with each got other it, got it uh and like, then you as a married couple are like dang we're we need to get our shit together i, was like, hey. I hate that only because it makes me well, feel like there was multiple married couples there and you could tell the ones that were married versus the ones that were new yeah <laughs> because like everyone else was ha- we all everyone was having fun but those two would be like yeah you know and wow, we're like wow, okay wow. enjoy it you guys know each other for sure. two days have uh, fun but no, they loved it. And so I know that she had like family that was kind of nearby. Mm-hmm. And so some of them did come out and hang out and they loved him. They were like, dude, out of all the guys so far, like this is, this is like, this one's our favorite. He's a really chill down to earth dude. Funny as fuck. Treats you super fucking well. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and the thing is too, is my husband and I would never ever hook up one of my really good friends with someone who's a shit bag or, or fuck yeah, boy. For sure, so for again, sure. it was one of my husband's good friends too. So we of course wanted it to be good. And it yeah, was. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the kind of, they both got kind of drunk that night. Sure. <laughs> Nervous. <laughs> you know, you don't know what's no, going we're, on. We're always having fun. Sure. But like, um, at one point she's like, I'm going to keep coming out here. You're going to see a lot more of me because of him. She's like, sure. he has me. And she's like, I really, really like him. So oh my gosh. I think it's very mutual. It seemed to work out really well. Neither of them seem to want anything serious, but right now they're kind of just, they're going with it, but Love they it. both really do like each other. Love so I don't to know hear if we'll it. become exclusive. That's stuff that like, I'm sure we'll talk about, but it seems like right now they're just kind of like, cool, we're happy with what we have. So they had a good weekend. They had a great fucking weekend. That's a great story for quarantine, yeah. right? So Quarantine dating. I think it this shows too that, and this is one thing that we can bring up in another episode because we had a few listeners bring this up to us talking about nice guys, mm-hmm. you know? And like he, he's like first of all, he's a cute guy. Like he's got a badass fucking job. Like you know yeah. what I mean. Like he can take care of himself. Like he's the he's a dying breed. Like handyman guy. Yeah, like, yeah Takes yeah. care of everything. Does his own shit. Like actually takes care of a fucking girl. By the way, like nice guys, you know, like you can. You're not always finishing last. Like this nice guy is getting what he wants. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he's not an asshole to her either. Right, right. Like, so what I'm saying is, like, that goes to show that you don't have to be a fucking dick or a fuckboy all the time to, like, get a girl. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, he, like, took care of her. He, like, made sure he had all her favorite snacks, her favorite drinks. Like, he knows she doesn't drink coffee in the morning, so she, he made sure to have decaf because she likes decaf. And yeah. she was all like, what? Like, couldn't believe it. Yeah. And still, until this day, shocked. Like, the guy that she was wanting to marry didn't even treat her this way. And most of the time when guys say that they're the nice guy, they're not. They're not. <laughs> they're the ones in your DMs being like, oh, well, thanks for fucking getting back to me. I guess nice guys finish last. Correct. Um, no. No, you're not nice. You're pathetic. And yeah. there needs to be a level of confidence with your niceness. So you can't just be this pathetic. Like, no, you can't be a guy who's I'm getting walked all nice over. I'm such a nice guy. And nobody likes me. Like... Are you, you can't know? be a pushover, you have to make though. Sure, yeah. Because he knows what he wants. He, they're both laying down the fucking boundaries. Difference. But at the same time, like, actions speak louder than words. He called her up right away. Like, he's a man. He called her. They talked on the phone. That's confident. He invited her out. He paid for the ticket. You know what I mean? Like, all the things that you could do, like, right? Yeah. Like, the things that you hear, like, you see in movies that are very rare, like, he did. There's the a huge thing. difference between a nice guy and a fucking pushover pussy yeah right so like being nice are those things right Correct. like thinking of the other person thinking what they may want yes. being confident enough to confidence is huge mm-hmm. but um just because you are shy or pathetic or any of that doesn't mean that you're nice Correct. there's a huge huge difference so yes I'm just saying and by the way don't be nice as a mean nice guys like, like just because you're not a fucking overt asshole that's like yes. you know alpha male doesn't mean that you're not a dick in other ways in that you're not thinking about what the other person actually wants i don't know how many times i've had in the past like guys in my dms just be like oh well thanks for fucking responding i guess being nice, nice. isn't the way to fucking handle it. like you know? obviously you're not nice you're showing me your true colors right now mm-hmm. and by the way you can still be nice but still stick up for yourself Exactly. You know what I mean? Like have boundaries and say, you know what? I really do like you, but I'm not going to put up with you talking to me that way. And that's a good thing to have too. And that's just being so the nice. That's guy having thing, self-respect. Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> nice guy thing nice. has been kind of misconstrued. That's I think such, along yeah. the way of like, there's a couple different things. It's not that we just don't like night, nice guys. It's that we like guys that do both. Mm-hmm. Get you a guy who can do both anyways. Yeah. 
Um, so love to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Happy for her. Um, maybe next time they get together, we can have a little bit more drama. God damn it. I'm <laughs> sure, right? So I'm so glad it just worked out and it was, it was perfect. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> everyone got along. It was such great a fun story. night. Anyways. Yeah. It was actually a great night for everyone. I'm sure it was fun. It was probably much needed. I'm yeah. jealous that you got to actually hang out with a group of people. Yeah. It was good. <laughs> I mean, when um, we were safe, like everyone, like we were safe. <laughs> No, it's okay. You were just hanging out with a group of people. It's okay. You don't have to. You don't have to. Yeah. You guys well, so, all knew where you've been. Like, whatever. You guys true. were all on the same page about what you wanted to do, which is like, are we all going to wear a mask right now? No? Okay, cool. Let's yeah. just fucking hang out. It's fine. <laughs> You're all right, <laughs> Tiffany. Don't worry. Um, so what we're going to do, how, how do we make this a drinking game? If, so, you, if you laugh. We'll do, the, we can do the laughing one. Okay. Because okay. I have a feeling all of us white people have done these. Things. Oh my God. So, <laughs> all right. So. So if you're at home, not while driving, but if you're at home, if you laugh during any of these, you have to drink. Okay? Okay. So. I'll do it with coffee. I'm going to try not to laugh right now. <laughs> already before we you start. You already lost. Okay. So I'm just going to go down the gambit of these. White people love to use the bathroom before they leave the restaurant and come out shaking their hands dry and say, ready to rock and roll. <laughs> no. No, they don't. That know. one I've never seen. That's what I've never seen. That's, I, I just it. liked your enthusiasm with it. But okay, white, now I'm really gonna try. White really people try. love saying, "I'll be sure to stay off the road when someone gets a driver's license." <laughs> See, people do say that. <laughs> um, white people love to say, "Well, I loosened it up for you," when asking someone help to open up the jar. Do you ever say that? Because I say that. That good. That one's good. White people love saying, oh, these are dangerous after trying a new snack. <laughs> <laughs> that, one's good. that one's good and true. Oh, those are dangerous. I think I said that the other night. Right? I was like, I've said this so many times. Oh, now I'm embarrassed. Let's okay. go. How many of these have I said like this week? Right. Go ahead. White people love saying, not getting far without these when coming back without their keys. <laughs> <laughs> ah! So, so true. true. <laughs> Wasn't going to get far without these yeah. yet. White people love saying, there's my cardio for the day when going up a flight of stairs. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I said that. Like, just uh, even running around like, there's my cardio there's for my the cardio day. There's my cardio for the day. Oh, God. I'm embarrassed right? for us. We say such corny shit <sighs> sometimes, too. Like, this. It's like, just, <laughs> but it, we talked about it before. Like, it's dads. Like, it is. Somehow it's ingrained in I us. Know. And, like, I don't even think. And they're white dad dna <laughs> i don't even think anything about it these are dangerous is something that i probably said <laughs> these are dangerous oh those are dangerous oh my god white people love saying um hey i'm still nibbling on it a bit when a waitress comes to take their plate <laughs> <laughs> it's so true and then we don't take one more bite we, do. I've done we don't so take many one times. more bite we just need it there correct to like feel my better bed, about yourself like my bed wine wasting like it just like makes me feel mm -hmm. good to have it there but i'm not gonna touch it yeah god damn it oh <laughs> wait people love to say we came at the right time as they get <laughs> as they notice the line gets really long while waiting <laughs> oh my god why white, white people love saying it's not the heat that will get you it's the humidity <laughs> oh Always, it's a dry heat. That's like all out. Yeah, we always have it's to say hot, something about It's hot, but it's a heat. dry heat. Do you know how many times I've commented about where I live before? I like, hate. oh, well, you know, like, Missouri was the humidity that will get you, but California was all dry heat. And <laughs> My God, I think I, like, I think I stopped a conversation, like, when I first moved out here that was about weather for, like, way too long, and I was like, you know what? I can't, I can't actually do this anymore. <laughs> I can't talk about the weather for longer than Correct. just like, fuck, it's hot if, or fuck, it's cold. Yeah. That's it. That's it. I don't want to have any more conversation about it. Well, here's it. another one that people like to say. White people love saying, good, we needed it so badly when it starts to rain. <laughs> <laughs> that <one's> good. <laughs> my dad will always look oh, out and be like, good, the oh, grass really needed, needed it. we needed it. We really <laughs> needed it. Oh, my God. Okay, go. White people love saying, oh, there's a wall there after someone runs into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> I always oh, say that, that like, awesome. oh, there's a wall oh, right there. Oh, there's a wall there. Uh, white people love saying, I'm just going to sneak right past you. Mm. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, just let me. Let me just sneak, sneak past. Right past them. Just go past me. This was said the other day. No joke at my house. 
white people love saying, this salsa has a bit of a kick to it. Oh, my God. <laughs> And literally, it's a fucking mild salsa. Oh, mild. Yeah, it's like nothing at all. Chris will say that. Oh, like, oh it's got a little, got a little kick little... to it. And I'm like, this has no kick. No kick. That's super white. You That's super white. Whitest of white men. Oh God, I love it. I love it. White people love saying, clean as a whistle. <laughs> Shit. I hope me making, I hope me laughing is making people laugh. <laughs> okay, white people love saying, I think, oh, wait, this is the same one. Um... Oh, white people love saying, I thought you fell in when you took more than... Oh, my God. <laughs> 2.5 seconds to use the That's bathroom. my dad. That's my dad. Did you fall in? Did you fall in? How'd it go? He said, how'd it go? My dad would say that, too. <sighs> white people love saying, I want to go in there if I were you. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> You're using the bathroom. I used to say that. I used to say you that. You used to say that? I still say it sometimes. <sighs> like, if, I, if I'm sharing a bathroom, if, I, if I'm at work, like, TDY... And the guys and girls' bathroom's the same. Yeah. Right? If I, like, after my coffee, go in there. Because the guys will respect me and not go sure. in the stalls. Sure. I'll be like, hey, listen, you don't probably want to go in there Just for a few. give it a minute. <laughs> like, I do that as a courtesy, but I guess it's a white person thing. Definitely a white person thing. Um, white people love saying, if I could just get your autograph when they need someone to sign <laughs> <laughs> something. Sounds good. Sounds good. White people love saying, when they pick up a check, okay, what's the damage? All right, what's the damage? All right, what's the damage? Yeah, all right, what's the damage? White people love saying, well, we're going to have this for lunch tomorrow as they fill their to-go box with a re- from the restaurant. <laughs> White people love saying, come do mine next when you walk past them doing yard work or washing a car. Uh, that's like the number that one, one that's thing. That's dad. That's dad. That's like 100%. 100%. Oh, you're going to come do mine next? Oh. <laughs> I said this the other day to Chris. White people love saying, whoa, looks like you got some sun there. <laughs> That's a good one. And true. Oh, you got some sun? Got mm-hmm. some color. Got some color. We say this. We've said this. White people love saying, speak of the devil. <laughs> right before, <laughs> like, answering a phone or, right like, seeing someone else. Right phone is the funniest one because it's so true. <gasps> oh, here's one right here. White people love saying, I took two years of Spanish in high school right before ordering a Spanish, right before trying to order in Spanish in a <laughs> yeah, Mexican yeah. restaurant. <laughs> Um, white people have to say, I keep thinking it's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. I keep thinking it's Friday. Friday. I've said that. So specific. White people love to say when it's snowing out, wow, it's really coming down out there. Oh my God. <laughs> That's with rain or rain snow. Rain or snow. Yes. White people. Wanna, I, oh my God. This is Chris and I. White people have to say, ooh, I want to see that after every movie trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, him and I will watch a movie. Like, we go to a movie theater, and after every one, I'm like, oh, I want to see that. The trailers get you. Yeah. yeah. For the most part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't want to see it in the movie theater. No, but. no, no. Uh, this is kind of this is kind of kind of right and kind of wrong. White people love saying, I'm almost as dark as you when they, like, compare their tans. Oh but God. this one says... <laughs> People do that. Oh, yes. But this one is saying that when they compare their tan to their black friends, I'm like, I don't really do that. No. We <laughs> like, definitely don't I do don't that. I don't compare that to my black friends. A Mexican friend, maybe. Yeah. An Italian, maybe an olive skin. I'll do it to other white people who are tan, though. For like, sure. Um, white people will say, oh, went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> <laughs> went down the wrong pipe is definitely When they cough white or person. eating something, yeah uh oh well there it is yeah white people have saying i wouldn't go in there if i were you <laughs> there it is there it is um white people love saying Haha, thanks i think we'll keep him when you tell them that their kids are cute oh my god i probably said that gross i'm ashamed i've definitely done this at work and i'm really embarrassed of this one hmm. white people love saying knock knock out loud instead of actually knocking <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, 100. That's true. Knock knock. Like yep. gone to different offices and been like knock knock. When I uh, walk in, like do the knocking knock. I know, I know. But you don't knock. Oh my god. I think you've done it here. Have I? I uh, probably. I probably have. Love it. It's um, so specific. White people love saying, "Okay, now let's do a silly one when taking a group." Oh my god. This one I do make fun of, though, because I'll do, like, I'll say it jokingly. Will let's you? do a silly, silly one. one. Yeah. Uh, let's do a boomerang. Let's do a couple okay, more. Okay, so I've, had my, I've heard my dad say this one. 
why people love saying it's not heavy it's just awkward to carry <laughs> So you know true. What I mean? So when true. When he has a hard time carrying something, listen, uh, I can carry heavy, it. It's just like yeah. an awkward shape. Yeah. <laughs> oh. White people love to say, "No, your other right." <laughs> <laughs> that one is good. That one is good. White people love saying, "Uh oh, they're on to me" when they hear police sirens. <laughs> <laughs> I've said this so many times. Hold on. White people love to say, I can't speak today after they mess up a word. Oh, my <laughs> god! Totally said that. We've said this. We both said it on the show multiple times. Can't talk mm-hmm. today. Yeah. I cannot speak. Words are not working. <laughs> oh my gosh. White people love to say, it always gets worse at night when they're sick. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love people. White people love saying, that was terrible after throwing a Frisbee. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the big one that everyone used to always say that I didn't think because I don't say this they would say white people always would say see you next year on December 31st I stopped saying that a really long time ago but I have right? said it before yeah but I stopped let's do a couple more I know why did it why is they're trying to make me log in now those assholes they're trying to, they're trying to me- click bait you Oh, here we go. Here's another one. Why people love saying, I'm going wherever you're going when they see someone carry a large amount of food. <laughs> I'll have what she's having. Oh, white people love to say, whoa, that building went up quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's a good one. That is good. That is and really true. good. Oh, my God. Okay. Here, I'm going to look it up on here now. <laughs> gonna be more i hope you guys are drunk we've been doing this pretty quick so i hope you guys are drunk yeah about the end of it yeah sorry i mean if you're drinking that fast um a lot of these are like very similar white people love saying signing my life away when <laughs> signing of any document at all <laughs> yeah my dad says that my dad is so he does signing his life away anyway so he's like oh signing my life away here i go um Let's see. White people love getting out of their car and saying, wow, it smells like the beach <laughs> when they're at the beach. <laughs> when they're at the beach. I think oh, I said that at your beach house. Fucking- <laughs> it smells like the beach here. Um, oh, my God. My mom says this all the time. White people love to ask, well, where's the last place you had them when they can't find something? Oh, my God. <laughs> That nothing aggravates me more where was a, than when where, someone asked me that. Yeah, well, where was it? If I knew the last place, I would just fucking find it. What? White people love saying everybody obviously had the same idea when they when a place is busy. <laughs> they show up at a place. Is busy. Okay, one more. Let's see if I can get this. Let's do one more. This is so true. Okay. White people love saying, "What did you go to a strip club last night?" When they see someone have a lot of one dollar bills. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yes. Better go, or I'm going to the strip club. Oh, let's go to the strip club. Oh my god, I've said that before. Oh, I've seen sure. a lot of ones like, oh, well, you oh where'd you go? The stri- oh my god. So yep. what the point of that is this <laughs> that like white people are loser dorks, right? We're just the worst. I love it. That made me no, laugh. No, I love it. It's that's some so funny, funny shit. <laughs> oh my god, but that's the thing. I say I feel like we a lot of us say this unknowingly. You know what I mean? Oh, no. Like I'm saying, it's just ingrained. Like your dad said it, your mom said it, everyone says it, and you just sort of say it without even thinking. thinking. Like knowing it's not funny, knowing no one's going to, it's not, do you know what I mean? Yes. Oh, God, I really because need you're to so think about you're so used to hearing about it. You're just so used, to, it's just like the thing, it comes out almost just like anything. You don't even think. It's just like, oh, well, that's happening, so I need to say this. <laughs> God damn. I feel like I'm going to be... At least for the next week, more cognizant. Yeah, for sure. Of what I say. And I'll then, try. And um, then we're going to go back to saying gonna all be a my whole, white person shit. Right. But, but then there's going to be a whole other crop of stuff that we're like, oh, my yeah. God. That's a whole new thing that we do. <laughs> Anyways, I've been seeing Love some it. of these on TikTok. And I think a radio show did them. And I was like, this would be hilarious to yeah. end with. So, uh, drinking broad. Drinking broad of the week, day. We've been doing day. Let's we're do, do we're, day. We're doing two a week now. Let's do day. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is from Benny. And Benny wrote, good morning, Bruettes. I would like to nominate Chloe. I'm going to say her name wrong. Chloe um, Haviland. 
for drinking brouette of the day. We welcomed our first child into the world on March 8th, right before all this madness kicked off. Um, she has been the rock of our family during all these crazy times. She has always stepped up to the plate for a little girl when my job requires long hours, um, random shifts, and when I travel out of town. She cares for everyone more than herself and will always go above and beyond for anyone who needs help. My daughter and I are so fortunate to have her leading our family through these trying times and whatever life holds after. I, um, it would mean the world to me if you can highlight her for drinking brouette. So Chloe's obviously his wife, yeah. and he's appreciating her and loving her on her during this time and i think that's like one of the best things you could do best things you can do is understanding Mm -hmm. especially a new mom like everything that goes along with that yeah and these quarantines and and being a rock yeah is harder than you think like it's a lot easier to be a mess sure than to be a rock especially in those times so i love to hear that i love when guys understand that benny yes Thank you, Chloe. You're you are amazing. Amazing. Congratulations. I know. Uh, you're going to look back on this like, oh, my God, that fucking crazy time. What a almost I think about having a newborn right now and I being know. like, would that be the best or the worst? I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I hope that it's maybe giving you more time yeah, than you maybe kids. wouldn't have before. Same. I hope I hope. But if not, it sounds like you're a badass and you would handle it anyway. So good for you. Way to go, Chloe. Way to go, Chloe. Bro out of the day. Um, white people love to say, <laughs> I'm going to say this name r- n- wrong right before this. <laughs> <laughs> so I do it all. I I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to pronounce this right, but, uh, but I, I, I love that I do it all the time because it's always like, hey, I do I'm going to butcher your yep. name. We love to like put that out there first. I do it all the time. I was like, when you said that, I was like, oh my that's God, a white I, person that's thing. a white person thing. Now I'm going to be thinking. All of that. By stuff. the way, I would really appreciate if we had anyone else besides a white person comment us and write us and say, "Actually, I say those things too." Yeah, just Maybe let us make know us feel if a it's little, just a, like, a little bit better, a dorky thing, or <laughs> a like I don't know, like a Are dad we thing. Huge, I don't know, corny, just white, just people. corny thing. I don't know. Maybe we're just corny, <laughs> like, but um, love it. This yeah. was a really fun episode, it was fun. and. Happy to have you guys all here. We will be back on yeah. Wednesday. And happy Monday, folks. Happy. Enjoy the week. Kick it off on a good note, you know? Why people like to say happy Monday, yeah. folks. Hit us up with <laughs> We sure do. I oh, thought yeah. it was a where, are they, where are they hitting us Hit up? Hit us up on anything if you guys want us to. If you guys have any questions, comments, if you guys want us to talk about anything particularly on the podcast, and if you guys want to get on iTunes. Write and review. Yes, we read them. We love them. And we also, like, we're getting some more products in so you guys will get them first we'll do like little drawings because we appreciate you for appreciating us so thank you thanks guys bye Bye. Bye. people love saying bye (laughs) (laughs) so true yeah you've been watching every move and plotting your next move on every girl i'm moving on yeah don't y'all better things to do